Welcome to Carman Cocktails. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pina colada and we're going to do it for approximately a buck 75 per cocktail for your ingredient breakdown. Following the trend in the last month of me creating cocktails on a budget for you to make at home. And as an example, I went out to the internet and I looked for a popular restaurant, top five restaurants in Boston, because I'm in New England, that have the pina colada. And the the one of the top restaurants was called Hojoko. Hojoko? Yeah, Hojoko. Um, in Boston, I think on Boylston Street. I looked at the menu, I looked at the pricing. This is a $15 cocktail in Boston, and it's just a pina colada. Most people get these on islands. Here's the cocktail breakdown. This one's going to be different than what you see on recipe.awesomedrinks.com, and it may replace that one if it's better. The thing I liked about this recipe from liquor.com is it has the usage of Oh look, a secret ingredient. It's called lime or sour. Most pina coladas are just sweet, sweet, sweet with no balance of sour. So I'm going to be kind of interested to see how this plays out. The recipe is going to be two ounces of light rum. It's going to be one and a half ounces of cream of coconut. I'm using Coco Real. Um, and you can use, do I have other brands? I do not. There is another cream of coconut that's probably less sweet, more coconutty if you want to get it. I can't remember what it's called. Real coconut? I don't remember. One and a half ounces of pineapple juice and a half ounce of lime juice, so just a little bit of sour. This cocktail is going to be shaken, unlike most people who make pina coladas who always make them blended, which is fine if you've got the blender and you're making a bunch of stuff, people are always gonna ask for a pina colada. Every other time though, it's kind of inconvenient, especially if you're at the pool and you gotta bring out a wire with an extension cord for the blender or use an emergence, immersion blender, which I typically would use, but shaking is even easier. So let's do that and see how it comes out. Cost breakdown. Bottle of rum. I picked Bacardi Superior because it's $13.49 on TotalWine.com for 750 milliliters. 750 milliliters is approximately 25 servings and cents or ounces really. And this is a two ounce rum drink. So it's two servings of rum, thus making it a dollar eight, contributing to our entire dollar seventy-five worth of ingredients. We're gonna do the coconut first, cream of coconut. And that's primarily because when you put the cream of coconut into, let's see, it's an ounce and a half good, it's on the side. When you put the cream of coconut into the jigger, the problem you're probably gonna realize is that it gets really goopy, and if it's the last ingredient, you gotta sit there waiting. So I'm gonna add this first. It's an ounce and a half, right? Is that what I said? I got my notes. Um, an ounce and a half, yep, ounce and a half cream of coconut. And you don't have to add any additional sugars to this because this stuff is pretty sugary to begin with. You don't need heavy cream like the recipe that I've used in the past, which is even nice, nicer, also nice. Now, first problem is it's super thick. So it's probably not gonna come out. You're gonna want a bar spoon or any type of spoon. So let's get that done. And if you want to get one of these cool spoons, you can check them out at awesomedrinks.com, which is my store where I sell barware. You can get a whole kit there. You can actually use the bottom because it gets in better. Next, let's rinse that out with a little bit of pineapple juice. I like that the pineapple juice balances exact ounce and a half against the cream of coconut. Not specifically because the taste wise, but it makes it easy to remember. Let's do this. And typically if you just get standard limes at the store, uh, you'll find that most limes equal about one ounce, especially if they're ripe in the winter time that it tends to work out a lot less. It's like 75% of 50% of an actual ounce. But during the summer, you can get a good solid ounce. I paid 50 cents for a lime, two for a dollar. So we figure 25 cents of that contributes to this. Um, on speaking of which, for your pineapple juice, I, if you buy like a big can, I said these tiny ones, and you get a better solid deal, it's 46 ounces for 349. That's like eight cents an ounce. So to do that out, it comes out to like 11 cents. If I were making this not on a budget, it really it doesn't matter, but I would use a rum that's not up here right now. I don't know where it went, my Barbados rum. I think a Mount Gay rum would work good for this. It's, it's a little uh, a little bit more vanilla caramely-like flavors to it. This has a little bit more neutral-like flavors, but when you're dealing with primarily, you know, a sweet forward pineapple and coconut concoction, the rum is here just to kind of like make it more an adult drink. The other thing that I think is kind of rad is it's got two ounces of rum, so it's, it's a fairly solid amount of rum. 
And because you're not blending it, you're not gonna end up with an over diluted pineapple drink and or coconut drink, because when you add a lot of that ice and you blend it, you're gonna need a lot of ice to bring up the volume. It's just diluting down the rum. I have a question of the day. How many people out there who have just sat down at the pool, maybe it's in Jamaica, maybe it's in Putacana, wherever, where you just had basically pina coladas all day at the pool and got any real type of buzz. They use typically a little less alcohol, a lot more sugar. Personally for me, I either get full, I get like this crazy sugar high, but on the islands, you don't have a lot of great selection for cocktails, ironically. You will get a better island cocktail in New York City than you will get on an island. And that's a fact, at least anecdotally. Ice, just put some standard ice in here or ice that's been frozen. However, I guess all ice is frozen, so you've, that's just me being made. Now, for me, personally, in a Boston shaker, I like to put my ice in a separate one than the liquid. I usually try to put the liquid in the small one if I'm just making a few personal drinks. If I'm doing it for a larger group, the 28, 26 ounce, 28 ounce, whatever these guys are, will be better for building the drink. But when you add ice, it's gonna start to overflow. So typically, if you're trying to build a drink and not make a huge mess, building it in here, putting the ice in here, usually allows you to make a drink that's not gonna just blow up all over the place when you pour them in, like so. Little tap, light tap, don't go crazy. It will freeze on its own. If you're worried about it spraying on yourself, just do this a couple times. You're gonna feel the metal get cold and the metal is gonna now seal and become hard to break apart. Now you're good to go. We're gonna shake this for 30 seconds because think of it as our way of blending. We're just using our muscles. All right, that's cold. Woo, a little lightheaded now, wow. All right, now, you're gonna break it apart. See, it's really not hard, why? Because I didn't slam it together. This becomes a personal preference just for the video's sake. I'm gonna use crushed ice. You can just pour regular ice in here if you want to. Crushed ice will probably be more like what you'd be expecting from a blended drink. Uh, it'll be smaller, it'll chill faster, it will dilute a little bit more. This is what we call a Lewis bag, it's a canvas bag. You, in a pinch, considering on a budget. You can use a Ziploc bag. You can use that hammer you used to bang down chicken. I prefer not to use the pokey side because it ends up tearing the bag. The Ziploc bag, that is. Or you get more hardcore, you get this. You get a wood mallet. Or in my case, Ian's dad gave me this massive, like, Thor's hammer, this Mjolnir, but I'm gonna do this on the ground so I don't break anything. Oh, look at that. A little bit more. Really wanna chill this sucker down. Plus, if you do it this way, you're gonna end up getting like two servings out of a single serving drink. So you're like, well, Derek, you're diluting it. Yeah, well, just drink two of them. It's, then you're drinking two times as much, half the dilution. That's just math, bro. Exactly like what you'd expect from a pina colada, bright white. A little bit of that orange tint to it. Look at that, look at that. Got my glass straw, protect the turtles. <laughs> Sorry, tried. I tried to do it with a straight face. Uh, let's take a sip of this. So here's the beauty of the pina colada. Even in the standard kind of like 1970s, well, no, maybe not 1970s, 1950s pina colada, which is a little forward on the sugar and pineapple versus this, which let's call this like a, circuit 2020 or something. Uh, let's pretend 2020 didn't happen. Let's go with 2024. Um, the flavor profile is still dominantly gonna be pineapple and coconut. Not really a lot of rum. However, the lime doesn't exactly give it a sour bite. It does bounce a little bit, so it doesn't taste as sweet, like as sickly sweet, because this stuff, this stuff, can, this is pretty, it's pretty in your face sugar. Um, let's let's see, 240 calories in, a, in two fluid ounces. We use an ounce and a half. So that gives you an idea of just how much like sugar, how much of it is actually sugar. Um, oh Jesus, <laughs> 40 grams of sugar. 79% of your daily intake of sugar right here, right? So it's sweet, that's what I'm saying. But the lime 
doesn't necessarily draw in a lot of sour, does bounce a little bit, but it gives it a little bit more of that limey flavor. And that makes it slightly more interesting because now you're getting that coconut, pineapple, lime, tropical feel versus just the two ingredients. So you're adding an additional ingredient. Will an average person know? Maybe not. They'll just say this is really good because I've very, had very few people go, oh, I don't like this pina colada. Most people are excited just at the thought of them. Was it going to change somebody's life radically? No. Put them side by side. Maybe that would be a thing. Maybe we should try that in a video as a side by side with and without sour. This is still a freaking good recipe. Not only can you make one of these for a buck seventy-five and save yourself, uh, well, fifteen minus a dollar seventy-five. Um, if you go out and buy this at the restaurant, which you have to drive to and spend, spend gas to get there, and probably have a valet and tip the valet, and it gets really expensive, and you're probably going to need food, and you get the idea. This is a lot cheaper to do at home. This drink dates back to the 1950s. Ramon Monchito Marrero. Marrero. I'm going to go Marrero at the Caribe Hilton in San Juan, Puerto Rico is said to be the bartender that either was the first to serve it, first to make it, first to base, basically be tagged with the knowledge that this drink exists. So that's pretty interesting. A lot of this kind of went to the wayside in the 70s because we made a lot of syrupy, sweet, blended drinks right up into the 80s and people just, they didn't weren't into cocktails. Later in the 90s, especially in the early 2000s, when even 08 when I created this show, we started to like really grow in the appreciation of cocktails again. And you got all these bartenders that came up and went back to the books, the originals, 50s, the 1800s, and found all these classic recipes and made them as they were, and then put their own spin on them later with bitters and different syrups and different distillates. For me, this is a one and done. Like I still wouldn't drink like these all day long, although I could definitely drink this at the poolside. If people keep serving it for me, I'd probably keep drinking them. And then I just feel bad about myself the next day. I suggest you make these at home. You save yourself the $15. If you want to spend $15 on a cocktail, go out and buy 15 times more ingredients than this and have a bunch of people over and reminisce about old times like video games and college experiences and high school craziness, whatever you guys did when you were growing up. At least you have like a social moment and you could do it for, for cheap money without having to go out and spend 15 more dollars than this is tip it really, really worth. This is $13.49 a bottle. Just Think about that for a second. That's insanity. So there you go. Pina colada. We're teaching you how to drink.